Hey, traders, this is Blake Marr with Trader Summit. And with me, I have Beat Newsbauer from Macro Beat. Beat, how are you? It's good to see you. Hi, Blake. How are you? How are you doing? Not too bad. Thanks. Uh, all right. Well, you know, I, I'm excited to have you actually ahead of the FOMC. We, we have, I, I don't want to say this is the historic FOMC that we have this, this month, but really this is where the FOMC is going to set the stage or, or tee it up, if you will, um, and get the market ready for, for potential you know, real moves in, in monetary policy. Do you have any expectations uh, going into the Fed and, and, and what's going to happen? I mean, obviously the markets and a lot of these big banks, uh, a lot of economists are really pricing in some pretty aggressive monetary policy uh, tightening over the course of the next, yeah, you know, yeah. 12 months. What, do, what are your thoughts here? Uh, to be honest, I mean, remember we chatted about it back in the of last year and even before that, that I've been always the fat hawk and always felt like people misunderstood power as a, as a duff, but in, 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 in my opinion, is, is a pragmatic uh, leader. And, and if 2022 and 23 needs a hawk, power is going to be a hawk. So actually, I have to admit that I am in the same camp for once, which makes me feel uncomfortable, maybe, <laughs> because I've been a hawk very early. But I just think, as I said last time when I was on the show, um, the Fed has to follow through. The Fed has to start putting in insurance in case that this is really uh, an issue. We also started to realize that actually the transitory elements or the you know bottlenecks are actually fueling inflation even further. So even if people think, oh, things are not quite all right, the Fed now knows that even adds to the problem. So I actually think I might not yet be at the level that they're going to hike at every meeting of 2022. But I, I think forget the three hikes, that's that's already history. I think we, we're probably somewhere around five, maybe going six. Uh, I think the only thing right now, given the equity volatility of the last few days, the geopolitics with Russia, some people just now feel, ah, oh, Paul is going to back out of it. And I think that is going to be wrong. Uh, the only thing I would say is I think we're going to get the telegraph for the March hike, which I think is definitely not going to be uh, 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 an issue. Uh, that's price. So in that sense, the market shouldn't be surprised. The only thing I would say is you just put up the S&P job is the massive losses in the last sort of, you know, 2022 so far. The market might suddenly get the, really the feeling of, him to under deliver or trying to kind of be a little bit more dovish and if the market is betting on this one in the last sort of 24 48 hours i think the market might be on the wrong track because you know this this sell-off should have happened you know in autumn or, or let's say latest uh, past december meeting the fed told us all the way what they're going to do the market didn't believe it uh, the equity market has been complacent for too long. And now rather than going down 10, 15% over 10 weeks, we've gone down in two weeks, you know, and it's a lot yeah. of fluff about it. So uh, this is not the Fed's mistake. This is just the market being complacent. So I don't think the Fed is going to be irritated by this. Um, you know, maybe we even get a little sell the rumor by the fact in equities out of the Fed, because I think at this meeting, we're going to get the March hike. They probably... Powell going to go as far as hinting that it could be more than three hikes than they said on the December meeting. But given how hawkish the market already is, I, I just don't think he can outhawk the expectations. Yeah, I was going to say, Whether, you know, how, how can he be more hawkish? I mean, you know, a lot of economists might believe that that the, the Fed might really, really, you know, uh, uh, front load some of these rate hikes. Do you, are you not in that camp? I am, but but not in this meeting. I think of this course. meeting is really, and that, that's, you said, a very important point, and that's why I'm actually, for once, less excited about this Fed meeting than I would otherwise be. Um, I think we now go with the hike to the other way, which might fully be true. I really do believe we're going to get a lot of hikes this year. But now we priced in so much that, like you say, how can he, he's not going to come out to say, oh, by the way, uh, you know, he's like, some people suggested, oh, what if they do a Bank of Canada, like just boom, and Q, uh, uh, just just get done with QE in one go. I think this is just not how they communicated, uh, how they've been doing things of late, definitely not under Powell. 
uh, I don't think we get any of these surprises. So I think it's going to be sad to say one of those where the expectations are maybe a fraction higher than what we can expect from the meeting itself. But I think the expectations are correct if you go further out into the March uh, meeting into sort of further into the year. For the January meeting, I fear that maybe the expectations are just a fraction too much. So let's turn our attention to currencies. So how how do you see the dollar faring here? I mean, the euro is obviously very weak. The euro's had a very, very tough time, you know, staging any type of rally over the course of the last few months. And, you know, here we are with the dollar, you know, stronger euros back below 113. Do you think that the euro has it in it to, to actually stage a recovery? You see some dollar weakness. Do you think, you know, the Fed's, since you, you believe that the Fed's going to continue to stay hawkish, does that mean that the euro is going to trade down towards, you know, 111, 112 moving forward? Yeah, to, to be honest, my sort of target for this year is, is, you know, not too enthusiastic. It's like 106, maybe you get a 103. I think we have a clear divergence on policy between the ECB and the Fed. The ECB has made clear they're not going to hike in 2022. Several uh, uh, ECB members did communicate that. Whether or not they're going to get a little bit nervous towards the back end of 22, and could we see a hike in deck 22? Yes, we could, but maybe the Fed has hiked like five times by then. So really from a pure divergence point of view, this is the best time the dollar can have, at least against a euro, against a Swiss, against a yen. Um, so I expect Euro to break down, whether it's going to be tomorrow or whether we have another boring U-turn before it finally breaks. It's very hard to tell because the Euro is a funny old currency. Um, the, the other thing to just remember is the geopolitics. Um, an invasion in the Ukraine by Russia would definitely hurt the Euro dramatically. So we're going to see Euro dollar lower, Euro yen lower. So the whole Euro axis, given it's a... Uh, uh, a war on European turf before it sort of morphs into more a global crisis. But if we just forget Russia for a moment, uh, you know that I have these sort of two most liked trades that I have on, which is long dollar yen, uh, long dollar Swiss, which obviously are a bit unfortunate in terms of uh, the Russia crisis. But if we get a sort of deal in Russia and we don't escalate into war, I think dollar yen and dollar Swiss are just going to rip higher. And you just, if you blink, you miss it. I, I really do. This whole move in yields have decoupled in the last few weeks due to geopolitics. So the trade has a little bit of a, a, a you know, stop start in it right now. But they are the best dollars to buy because of the same story. Policy divergence. The SMB is not going to hide. The BOJ is not going to hide. There were some people talking about, oh, BOJ, you know, thinking of hiking, but Kuroda made quite clear in the last meeting they didn't talk about a hike at all. So we just have to focus where policy di- divergence is the largest, and that's going to be against the yen, against the Swiss, against the euro. Well, turning, turning, the, turning the attention back to, you know, the Russia-Ukraine situation, um, you know, how would that affect crude oil. I mean, a lot of lot of uh, people are expecting crude oil to see 100. Um, yeah. You know, we've got crude oil that's holding pretty steady near the, you know, $85 a barrel range for the for WTI. Do you see that, you know, uh, that 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 if the situation improves, is that is that the basis for the crude oil market to, to trade back down towards the 200 day moving average? Or do you see crude oil continuing higher towards 100? What, what are your thoughts with crude? Uh, To be honest, I mean, if you were to talk about escalation, we have a big energy crisis in Europe, which is obviously, you know, gas, but on the second derivative, oil, if you want. Um, So as you rightly say, a de-escalation in the crisis will probably be the biggest chance to see oil coming off. It's a mix of Fed tightening, stronger dollar. Uh, Let's not forget, if oil doesn't have its own story, it's very often the anti-dollar, so the other side of the dollar. So if the dollar can rally, you know, 10% in 22, there's definitely some natural drag on on oil itself. It comes down to, and there is where it gets a bit complicated, is how strong do we think uh, the economy is? Will China start to recover in 2022? Is there sort of broader economic recovery? Is Omicron, again, being the sort of little delay in the recovery? So I'll be very honest with you. I don't think that 
everything is mapped out for oil as maybe is mapped out for other asset classes that are a bit easier to call. I just feel we have a lot of variables in oil and I cannot, I can definitely not deny that there is a risk that we go up to a hundred, but it's not necessarily my center case. But I also have to admit, I'm macro, but I'm not the deepest oil expert. This is just sort of in line with, with the rest of my thoughts. All right. Well, B, you know, do you have any last minute thoughts before, you know, people are going to be watching this just, you know, probably ahead of the FOMC, um, waiting for, you know, Powell, his, uh, his, his pal and the, uh, the Fed to, uh, to put out their statement and have the press conference. Any last minute uh, ideas you want to throw out there at anybody? Uh, to be honest, the, the core is we've got to go with a hook, even though a hook is expected. So I would say the setback on, on a small disappointment on not the, the Powell couldn't out hawk the meeting. Yeah. I think the setback is gonna, gonna be minimal because I think the market starts to understand that this is real, the Fed is gonna follow through. Similar to what I said before the last non farm payroll, buy dollars, if the market is a bit disappointed, just buy the dip, if it's aggressive, buy right away. But yeah. you buy in any case. I think the story is not going to change. It's just a factor of speed or tactical approach, but it's not going to change the direction. That's interesting. That's you know some of the conversations I've had uh, with our currency traders has been you know look this might be actually more boring just to buy the dollar. It's definitely not going to pay as much. But look, the Fed's probably going to continue to stay hawkish, right? And yeah. so that's kind of the, uh, the the path we've got to stay on until proven otherwise, correct? Yeah. To be honest, and, and the other thing is that, and that's why I don't choose the dollar against other currencies. We're going to get the RB. We had a higher CPI in Australia last night. The RBA might finally bring forward that sort of late 23 hikes into maybe market starts to price summer 22. Um, Canada, Bank of Canada tomorrow as well. So, you know, you have probably normalization in Australia and in Canada that, and the Bank of England, right? So those are the tricky dollars. That's why I don't touch it. I try to stick with what I think are the easy ones. <laughs> <laughs> well, B, we can appreciate that as traders. And I want to say, you know, it's pretty awesome to have you back. It's been, it's been way too long, even though it's probably only been a few weeks been way too long in my book. Um, if, if I want to know more about what you do, I'm a trader and I, and I haven't clicked down below at your link to get to your site. How do I follow you? To be honest, I'm on Twitter, MacroBeatL. Uh, I'm on LinkedIn under my actual complicated surname, Beat News Farmer. Uh, and to be honest, that's where you probably see more of me than maybe on, on my website. But to be honest, just 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 say hello, and you know I, I have I run a few chat rooms. Always feel free to have a look into my work because obviously I can't show. I probably show about three percent of my work out there, and ninety seven is like kept indoors. <laughs> so yeah, if you're curious, just get in touch. We have a chat, and we take it from there. Awesome, Beat. And for those of you that are watching at home, especially if you're watching on YouTube, make sure you give Beat a thumbs up, telling them that you really appreciate the information, especially ahead of the Fed. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, our Trader Summit YouTube channel, so you don't miss any of this free content that we put out there and any of Beat's co content too. Beat, I want to thank you very much. Have a great and great FOMC. Good luck at the FOMC. And uh, thanks for joining us today. Thanks a lot for having me, Blake. Have a wonderful time. You do, you do the same. We'll talk to you soon. Hey traders, Blake Morrow here. Thanks for stopping by our YouTube channel. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel. Also click the bell notification so you do not miss any of our market-related trading analysis from some of the leading industry experts. Thanks for stopping by. We'll see you in the next video.